It's now my great pleasure to introduce our two honorees for this evening. I have a special affinity for Austin Hirsch, perhaps because I served on uh, his uh, finance committee for a few years before I became chair, and uh, perhaps because we share a distinctive hairstyle. <laughs> and uh, for Lowell Sacknoff, I have something approaching awe and amazement. These two men are accomplished civic leaders. They are top drawer attorneys. They have made themselves absolutely indispensable to the bulletin. As someone who's been a serious student of governance over the past 30 years, I can tell you Lowell and Austin embody for me what it means to be a committed trustee, a loyal keeper of the bulletin's faith, and a dedicated steward of the intent of this organization. Y'all pardon me if I wear my emotions on my sleeve. <laughs> Their longstanding commitment to the bulletin has helped move this organization into a more robust and resilient position. How else can I say it? Thank you both, Lowell Sacknoff and Austin Hirsch. I guess it is no surprise that, to know which one of us is up here right now based upon our hairstyle. I'm Austin Hirsch. And thank you, John. Uh, both Lowell and I really appreciate your remarks and your leadership for the Bulletin Governing Board. Um, it's really been special, and it's been special to serve with you. I'm honored and privileged to be with you tonight. Firstly, I would like to thank two special friends, Marjorie Benton and Bill Ravel. Marjorie and Bill were each independently instrumental in encouraging me to join the bulletin board about 10 years ago. I am so grateful to them for following their advice. It is especially sweet for me to share this evening with Lowell Sacknoff, who over the years put his trust in me in so many ways and has been a role model during my entire career. As a partner of Reed Smith, I am very appreciative that we as a firm have supported the work of the Bulletin. Reed Smith has a culture encouraging our attorneys to participate directly in pro bono and charitable organizations. And I'm so honored that many of our Reed Smith colleagues are here this evening, including leaders of the firm and many attorneys who have joined with Lowell and me in providing legal services and advice to the Bulletin. In providing advice to the Bulletin, it's so special for us to work with Rachel Brownson and her team. It is Rachel and that excellent team, more than any of us on the governing board, who should be honored tonight, as they increase the Bulletin's relevance and importance for our society each and every day. Thank you, Rachel, and the team.
My professional expertise is in law and how it intersects with business and business decisions. Science is not in my wheelhouse. Indeed, I consider myself as representing many in our society who need to have a channel about science from a credible source like the Science and Security Board of the Bulletin. On a personal level, the opportunity to observe the Bulletin scientists as they set the doomsday clock each year has really been quite an experience. It's not only the discussion, but the thought given in their writings afterwards that have just been amazing to me, and I would say transformative. During my practice as a business advisor, I have learned the importance of strategic planning. However, strategic planning needs to be followed by effective implementation. We must act and execute on the science shared by the bulletin in addressing these man-made existential threats. On a personal note, I'd just like to take a moment to thank and recognize my family, my wife Beth and my daughters Danielle and Bruni. I want to thank them for supporting me over the years. I am indeed blessed to have them in my life. I would also like to thank my friends from across various spectrums of my life who, have, who are both personal and professional friends. I am so fortunate that friends spanning my entire life have supported this evening, including, believe it or not, friends from grade school. Yes, that's true. <laughs> College, law school, business colleagues, law partners, former law partners, book group friends, Shabbat group friends, self-help friends, Sukkot Shalom friends, and wonderful client friends. Supporting the bulletin has been very special, and I am deeply moved by their generosity. We have the opportunity to make tangible positive difference in improving our world. I wholeheartedly support the work of the bulletin. And let us join together to take steps to move the clock away from midnight. Our, our, our children and grandchildren and the next generation are depending upon us. I am so proud to share this evening with my friend and partner, Lowell Sacknoff, and I would like to introduce Lowell. I'm really privileged to share this honor with Austin Hirsch my longtime friend and colleague. And I was really happy to have him join the bulletin board because there could be no better lawyer than Austin to take some of the load off of me <laughs> to do some of the work at the board. And, and he has been absolutely spectacular. I joined the bulletin board about 14 years ago. And like Austin, I did it at the urging of Marjorie Benton, right here because there's no way anybody can say no to Marjorie Benton. <laughs> and so I joined in large part because of Marjorie and because of my investigation of the bulletin, and I realized that it fit in with my early experience in naval intelligence during the Korean War, when in 1953, Russia exploded its first hydrogen bomb that was an event that raised the risk of nuclear devastation to a new level, a new level from the nearly 75 years ago when the scientists at the, uh, under the squash courts at uh, the University of Chicago created the first nuclear chain reaction that led to the atomic bomb, those very same scientists then recognized the urgent need 
to address the threat to the planet that they created. And to do so, they launched the bulletin of the atomic scientist and the doomsday clock. And in, in thinking about um, the bulletin over all these years and, and of what I might want to say this evening, I, I have a family story that I think captures the overarching importance of the bulletin's work to address those existential threats to the well-being of our planet and to the lives of all of us who live on it. A while back, my California family with my granddaughter, Sasha, came to visit us. Sasha was 10 years old, and at the dinner, I mentioned that I had a bulletin board meeting the next morning, and Sasha listened to us talking about the bulletin's work and all the threats that could doom the planet. Next morning, as I was about to leave for the bulletin meeting, Sasha said to me, Grandpa, will you help save the world from being destroyed? And I thought for a minute, and I told her, all I could do is say, I would do the best I can. I'll try to help out. And as I thought about Sasha's question, I reflected on how it must be for Rachel Bronson, our absolutely remarkable CEO, who has to face that question every single day when and while she's at work. How do you save the world from total extinction? In a nutshell, that question squares with the bulletin's mission in working to inform the public, inform policymakers around the world, and inform scientists with the information that they need to demand and support public policies that reduce, <coughs> excuse me, that reduce the man-made threats of nuclear war, of global warming, and the threats of disruptive technologies like bioterrorism and global warming. The bulletin provides this information in our award-winning journal and with our iconic doomsday clock and its minute hand that's recognized around the world and shows the distance from the symbolic point of our doom. It's at two minutes to midnight now, and all of us need to be concerned about the fact that that's the closest to doomsday it's been in uh, almost 22 years. The work that Austin and I and others at Reed Smith do for the Bulletin is a continuation of the pro bono work that our legacy firm, Sacknoff and Weaver, encouraged by developing a, a culture that was grounded in the premise that a law firm could do good besides doing well. Twelve years ago, when several large firms were looking to merge with us, <clears throat> a fact that helped us conclude that Reed Smith would be the best fit for us is the fact that they, with offices around the world, had also encouraged pro bono work by its lawyers. And as Austin said, both the bulletin's new existential threats of man-made, excuse me, of man-made global warming and disruptive technologies, those two new threats also involve a wide range of new and challenging legal issues for us to wrestle with. In closing, uh, I want to acknowledge and thank my family here, especially my wife, Faye, who has put up with the interruptions to my so-called retirement uh, by, having, by watching me work for the Bulletin and on other pro bono matters, and also to acknowledge uh, others in the Sacknoff clan who are at our table here. <clears throat> 